Good morning, this is Father Jeff here at St. Andrews in State College. Welcome. Glad to have you with us here on this second Sunday of Advent. Uh, there is a video on our Facebook page of uh, the lighting of the second candle on our Advent wreath. If you would like to uh, uh, go watch that now real quick, it just takes a minute or so. Um, you, can, you can pause this and go back to that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're going to have just a few minutes of silence before we begin our prelude. Uh, if you want to follow along in this service, there is a link uh, in the video, in the description of this video, to the service booklet. And if you want to give to support the ministries here at St. Andrews, then there is also a link for giving, also instructions about how to give through a text message. Again, we're delighted that you're with us. Enjoy this few minutes of silence.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feel, feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth, and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, Strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance, for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate with locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
watching for God, getting ready to celebrate Christmas on December 25th. So it is definitely a time for us to be preparing, preparing to receive God at Christmas time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. But we also look ahead as <clears throat> we remember the first time Jesus came as a baby in Bethlehem. We also look forward to the time in the future when Jesus will return, when he will come back and he will join us in this world and establish his kingdom right here on earth. So how do we prepare for that? Well, I'm going to mention three ways that you can prepare the way of the Lord this Advent. First of all, you prepare a way by preparing a place inside your own heart to receive Jesus. Remember the Christmas story, how Mary and Joseph found that there was no room for them at the inn, so they ended up sleeping in the stable with all of the animals. Well, the question is, this Christmas, will Jesus find a place for himself in each of us? So preparing the way of the Lord can be for us preparing that space to receive Jesus and to receive the love that he brings into the world and to be able to reflect that love back out to the rest of the world in his name. So prepare the way of the Lord by preparing a place in your own heart to receive Jesus this Christmas. And the second way that we can prepare the way of the Lord is for us to look around at the world around us, this world that God created and, and gave to us with all of its great abundance, everything that we need, and enough for everyone, and look around and see how things aren't quite the way God would hope that they are. And what can we do to work to help to build that kingdom that Jesus will fully institute when he returns. What can we do now to be partners with God in creating that kingdom? And that means when we, we see lies, we counter that with the truth. And that means when we see injustice, we counter that with justice. And that means when we see hatred and fear, we counter that with love and mercy. And we do just like John the Baptist did. We tell the good news. We tell people about how Jesus is coming into the world and how special that is and how important it is that everybody has that place in their heart to receive Jesus. And the third thing that you can do this Christmas is this. This Christmas, of course, we're in the middle of this pandemic. That's why you wear masks when you go out in public. And that's why we can gather here in the church or for church school during this time. And I really miss seeing you all. I can't wait until we can all come back together in church Sunday and see each other and give each other high fives and hugs. But right now we can't do that. And we're not gathering even for Christmas this year. And that really hurts. That hurts that we can't gather to celebrate Christmas. But we are doing something special for Christmas. This year, we are going to have, you're going to have the opportunity to have communion at home, either on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day. So right here on our altar, in a couple of weeks, on the fourth Sunday of Advent, I'm going to consecrate the bread and the wine, a whole bunch of it. Just like we do every Sunday where we, I pray over the bread and the wine. And this time it's going to be these tiny little cups that look almost like an hourglass, and on one side, uh, all sealed up and sanitized, 
is uh, a little piece of bread on the other side, also sealed up with a little sip of wine. We're going to consecrate all of that. And remember what we say when we give you communion. When you get the bread, we say, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And when you get the wine, we say, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. So once I say that prayer and we, and we do this consecration of those elements, the bread and the wine, it becomes communion. And it becomes the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. And it is a way that we experience Jesus' presence with us here in this world now. And that's part of what everybody's been missing since we haven't been able to get together for church is having this sacrament of Christ's presence. But after that fourth Sunday of Advent, once everything is consecrated, we're going to have a way to get that communion to you. So here's what I want you to do, to be prepared to receive a little kit of communion of Christ's body and blood this Christmas. I want you to find a place in your house someplace special. It doesn't have to be fancy. Jesus was never about being fancy. But it has to be someplace special, someplace set apart, someplace that you think about and talk about with your parents and your family and talk about where are we going to put our communion until we're ready to receive it. I want you to prepare that place in your house. Maybe you have a crash scene in your house, a little scene of the, the stable and Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. Maybe there's a star or, or, or an angel, shepherds and sheep, wise men. If you have a place like that, that might be a place that you can make room for a little bag, a little paper bag that will hold the little cups with the bread and the wine. And just put it there. Maybe you could have a candle burning there. We have a candle here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a candle where we keep the communion over here in the, in the little box, a little safe in the wall where we keep our bread and wine that's been consecrated. You don't have to have a candle. Talk to your folks about that. It's not necessary. It's just an option. But the important thing is for you to prepare a place for Jesus in your house. Because you're going to get that little kit, that little bag with the bread and the wine. You're going to bring it home. And you're going to have a place to put it, a special place that's all set aside until it's time on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day to receive that communion. And then you'll have a chance to open it up take out the bread, and eat the bread, and uh, if you drink a little sip of wine, or if you, if you dip the wine, the bread in the wine, you can do it either way. You don't have to use the wine at all, just the bread is fine. So now is the time, I want you to think about this, and prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare a place in your home to receive communion body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this Advent and this Christmas, I want you to remember those ancient words of the prophet Isaiah, prepare the way of the Lord. And I want you to think about how you're going to do that. And I want you to talk about how you're going to do that. And I want you to be all about preparing the way of the Lord. Let's say a little prayer together. Let us pray. Lord, we ask your blessing upon all of our children and youth. We pray that they would be encouraged and strengthened during this difficult time as they experience school through their computers, that they would find a way to learn and to connect with their friends and their teachers. 
We pray, Lord, that as we go through this season of Advent, that we would all think and work and pray about how we can prepare the way of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. We pray for our companion parish, St. John's in Belfont. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. James, Lancaster. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reformed Episcopal Church of Spain. Pray that they may find and be found by him. Ask your prayers for the departed. 
Pray for those who have died, especially Louise Eastman, mother of Gwen Ketchum. I ask your prayers for those who have been commended to us on our parish prayer list. Pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Might God give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility. But in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, once again, uh, welcome. Glad you're able to uh, join us again this week. If uh, if you didn't catch it earlier, uh, just a reminder that there is uh, a link in the description of this video if you would like to give online or through a text message to support our ministries here at St. Andrews. We appreciate any, any donations. Uh, I hope you have time to join us for our virtual coffee hour. Uh, that takes place on the, the Zoom platform, and the link for that is in our weekly email that went out, actually went out on Friday uh, this week. Uh, also, this past week, uh, our, our newsletter went out and has lots of information about uh, Advent and upcoming uh, Christmas, so I commend that to you as well. I hope that you are able to join us this afternoon. It's going to be cold, so bundle up. Uh, we're meeting outside over in Sydney Friedman Park at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, you want to be there right on time. This isn't going to be a real long event for uh, safety reasons. We're going to keep it as short as possible. But we will be gathering at a distance. Wear your mask, uh, and we will have a little uh, fire going to help keep everyone uh, warm. That's as close as you'll be able to get to the fire anyway. We're going to sing some Christmas carols, uh, and then we will have a visit from our good old friend, St. Nicholas. Today, the 6th of December, is St. Nicholas Day, so it's a perfect time for us to have our old friend show up and um, uh, give us some, some goodies, some treats for, for the, the holiday season. Now, next Sunday... We have a real special treat for you uh, in this uh, corona-tide, uh, crazy time. Our uh, choir and our youth choir 
uh, have been very creative in how they were able to get together in small combinations and distances with masks and record some great Christmas music for us. So next Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning, instead of having a Eucharist service, we are going to premiere the video of our Lessons and Carols service. Always a holiday favorite. It's going to be a little bit uh, abbreviated this year, uh, but we have been able to get some guest readers from our community to honor them and their work during uh, the coronavirus pandemic, and uh, uh, they will be part of that program. So next Sunday at the usual time, join us for Lessons and Carols. I think that is all of my announcements this week. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the
to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Isaiah and all the prophets, and blessed Andrew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gift of God for the people of God. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. 
never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and the simplest heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
Uh, we were blessed to have her for a few weeks and, and right through uh, Thanksgiving as well. Uh, but she is now safely home. And look forward to seeing her again sometime. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to you.